Salute to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting, uh, February 26, 2018. We'll have uh, public hearing pursuant to RSA 284-51-I-B. And we'll open that public hearing at 7 o'clock for the purpose of complying with the provisions of RSA 284-51-I-B to solicit to solicit to solicit public hearing comment to allow Kino within the town. So, do we have anybody wishing to make public comment? Well, now it makes sense. Don't run. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Uda Penio. I hope uh, in the March meet, in the March vote, town vote, said people vote for Kino. Right now, if you watch in the afternoon, it's a mass exodus. They're going across the bridge going into Massachusetts, spending the money over there, and coming back. The money is gone, not only for the town or people who own restaurants or bar rooms on the beach. It's also gone from the, for the state, the rooms and meals taxes. So I hope people are voting for it. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard on Kino? Yeah. Just made it. <laughs> Just made it. <laughs> um, I'm Donna Mercer. I, um, I work at Ocean Gaming, and I think that this is a no-brainer for the town, for the businesses. Um, it's, it's pennies to play, it's dollars to play. Um, I, I just think turning it down would be ridiculous to have them go across the border to Salisbury. So I just wanted to say that. Thanks, Donna. Chairman Waddell, ladies and gentlemen of the uh, Select Board, my name is Chris Nevins. I live at 36 Ashbrook Drive. I'm here also to advocate uh, for Keno for the town of Hampton. As you gentlemen and ladies well know, uh, the bill has already passed uh, at the State House that uh, uh, we have that choice. We are allowed to choose whether to, to have it or not, and many of the towns have already voted for it, and it's already shown some uh, productivity. I'm also speaking to people who know all about how education is funded uh, in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, our state funding is based on a, a grant system called the uh, Adequate Education Aid uh, System, and uh, it receives, we receive, and all towns receive, $3,600 per student. Uh, for our kindergartners, uh, though, that's cut in half to $1,800, and uh, that's what uh, all the towns are, do receive for their kindergartners. If the keynote does pass, uh, there's going to be more advantage, obviously, to not only towns who don't have kindergarten, but a town like Hampton who does have kindergarten. Uh, not only will we continue to receive the $1,800, that's not going to change at all, uh, but there will also be an additional for fiscal year uh, 19, uh, $1,100 added to that $1,800 uh, for uh, kindergarten. And if Keno does pass in a town, uh, or if Keno does pass and it flourishes, if you will, and profits, we'll also be able to get in 2020 and possibly beyond uh, additional funding up to $700, $750 or so. So we see a great advantage, not only because people cross the border and, uh, you know, we're losing some funding there, uh, but the fact that uh, people want this form of a lottery, and it's, I'll have to call it that, a lottery, because it's just uh, a, a, when you gamble a little bit, when I go out and buy a lottery ticket, it's just a choice I make. Uh, and uh, admittedly, I don't make it very often, but when I do make it, it's a choice I make, win or lose, uh, that's the way it's going to be. Uh, so I would encourage, you know, I repeat this, and I know most of you, you, all of you know what I've just said about the law, but I hope the people of Hampton are listening tonight. I hope many of them know that uh, the, the fact of 
having a game like Kino uh, <clears throat> and, and that advantage uh, is, is really something we can't pass up. The money's certainly going to the casino, and if the casino gains, uh, well, then we're going to gain more in taxes. The, if the casino gains, the uh, charitable organization is associated with it, and I'm a uh, coordinator for two charities at our local uh, casino here, will also uh, gain an advantage. Uh, so for that reason, I would really um, encourage uh, not only my select board, uh, but uh, my townspeople to vote for when uh, it comes up here in March, in our second Tuesday in March when we have our elections, to vote for uh, Kino in a very positive way, and I think we're all going to benefit from that vote. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public wishing to be heard on this subject? Good evening. Good evening. Richard Rennie of 29 Highland Ave. I was a little disappointed. I thought there might have been somebody here from the Gaming Commission that would give us a little more insight on uh, some of the, the uh, ramifications of this whole thing. So I'm not sure at this point, for my, myself personally, if I consider this to be a boon or a boondoggle, only because there are a number of questions that I have and I wish somebody would, be, would answer them for me. First of all, from my understanding, uh, this system of playing Kino is going to be a little different than the way we go out and buy lottery tickets now, where you walk up to a counter and you buy the lottery, the scratch tickets, that these machines are independent standing units. Is that correct? No. From what I've seen. It's a unit well, that somebody sits over works here. it, though. It's worked through a main computer system. Right. Yeah. Best. You, you have to go to someone who sells you the tickets. Well, what are the machines that I have seen, Kino, somebody standing in front of that machine and punching their numbers in? Mm -hmm. That's different than the way they play Kino in Massachusetts. You go to a vendor, you stand up there, you and you give him a slip, and he punches it in for you. So it's Anyway, different. that's one question. What type of system is this? Uh, how do you pay for it? Is it through, you know, do you go up to this machine with your credit card to play a dollar bet? Or do you put cash in that machine? I don't know. So I'm a little questionable. Um, that was one of the questions. What type of unit is it, and how do you pay for it, through cash or a credit card? The second thing, what is, it, what is going to be the cost or the additional cost for the Gaming Commission to control this system? I'll just cite one example here. If you are all over you have seen these white vans that go around to the different vendors to resupply the, uh, the scratch tickets and to pick up the revenue and so on. Just for the sake of discussion, let's assume that this fella is able to cover 25 different stores during the course of the day. Well, now you're going to add another function for him to do. He's going to have to service that machine. He's going to have to remove the cash of it or, or, or resupply the cash. He's going to have to fill it up with the with the uh, the blank slips. So now it's probably going. To, he's going to add additional time for every time that he has to stop to one of these vendors. Keep going. How much how much more time is that going to cost? Uh, is it going to involve additional personnel to service these machines? What percent of the revenue? is retained by that, the bar or whoever has that machine. Eight percent. He gets, so wherever that machine is placed, he gets eight percent. How much of it does the state get for the administration and the accounting of this? Or for everything that the state, that involves the state? What percentage of that dollar goes to the state? And what percent of it is into the, the kindergarten fund. I don't know. So, so some of, those are some of the questions. Does the money stay within the town? If we have five machines in various establishments around town, is the money, the money that is generated from those machines, what portion of that stays within the town to fund the kindergarten within the town. I've or read that they split it. it they, that all towns split it, whether they even do Kino or not. They all get a share of it. 
It's split well, equally. Whether or not they, in other words, if they if they don't if they don't put the Keno machine, if, if towns vote not to do Keno, right, they, still they get are the still money. entitled to the. They fund. still get a percentage of the of the revenue. Yes. Does that seem quite fair? Again, those are the questions that I have. Uh, so until I hear a little more about it, uh, again, I'm undecided whether or not this is going to be good for us. <coughs> Thank you. You know, I'm sure if yes. you went to the bill and read the bill, that would probably have a lot of those questions in there, the funding and everything, the percentages would probably would most likely be in the bill, or if you contacted the Gaming Commission. All right. I bet you you could get Well, again, questions. I thought there might have been somebody from the I, Gaming Commission here yeah. tonight, you know, to, to answer our questions. But good questions. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard on the public hearing? Anybody from the board wishing to speak on this? Okay. Sure. Yes? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I know that some of the towns have already passed the Keno legislation. I know Summonsworth is one of them. One of the uh, uh, little businesses up there, uh, she claims her, her business itself has increased by 20%. <laughs> I guess she's the highest store in the state so far for selling Kino. Uh, like you said, eight percent of it goes to the goes to the place. Does it. Right. Uh, the funding, as far as the rest of it, it all goes back to the state, and then they're going to disperse it out. Whether we can we can talk all day long about whether it's right or wrong that a town doesn't town gets it for uh, whether they allow Kino or not. Uh, I think the big thing is that we have a lot of businesses in this town that would enjoy the Keno. I think we have a lot of citizens in this town that enjoy Keno. I, <coughs> I was talking with a guy the other day who says he goes, his routine is Saturday nights, he goes over and plays Keno over in Salisbury. Well, he can come to Hampton and play Keno and stay right in town. Keep his business local, keep his, uh, not only for the Keno, but for having dinner and everything else. I think uh, that that's important. Um, you know, so like I said, the, the establishment that sells it, they get it. As far as servicing the machines, I, I would assume it's going to be similar to the to the, uh, the the mega bucks machines you can buy now that they have now, where the the business that has them, they actually stock those and they take care of that is on a lot of them. You know, the state may come and do a machine here or there, but I know a number of businesses that have the machines in them. And they stock them themselves. The state sells them the stuff, sells the, sells them the scratch tickets, and they put them in the machine themselves. The machine will just the the state will come around, check your figures, check your counts, make sure everything is right. But this, you know, it's uh, the ability of the of the, uh, m the uh, establishment themselves to to uh, to make sure the machine gets full and stays full. So I think it's a great uh, a great thing for the town, and I hope all the voters do consider. Allowing us to have it because I think it's again, right now we're getting eighteen hundred dollars. After this, we're going to get another eleven $1 hundred dollars more, and probably another seven hundred above that. On that, that goes back to the schools. It helps every little bit helps. So, so they're not doing it like they do it in Massachusetts. <laughs> I don't know how it's. I don't know how the actual game is played here. Whether it's different than the mass game or not, because I think they're making a mistake if they don't. The, the way it works, I've played Keno all over the world. They have a lady selling the tickets, and if they do it out of a machine, that's so you put money into the machine. No one's going to use it. They're going to drive right over to Massachusetts as fast as they can get. Oh, there. I'm sure that there's, I'm sure there's some way. I don't know because you can buy scratch tickets without buying them from a machine yeah, well, too. So the I, way Keno I'm usually. Find out from Find what out. happens with Keno is every six minutes another game starts, and they sell them. And you own, it's even less than six minutes. I think it's every three minutes. You, they just keep selling them. They have to have a person there punching it into the machine. Then those same people are the ones that cash the tickets. So if it works like a like a, a Keno scratch ticket, that's not going to do that good. So I can't even imagine they would do that. They've got to be doing. Uda must know. It's going to actually work both ways. They'll, uh, they can have someone doing it, keying it in. There'll also be a kiosk where you can go in. You cannot, as far as I know, you cannot purchase lottery tickets with a credit card. Yes, you can't but do any can't lottery stuff. In it, yeah. you can put cash in the so you mean you could fill out your machine and yes. you do it, but it would be just like the woman punching it or the person it punching it. It would be in the way that you can... Um, go to a kiosk now and get a Megabucks 
ticket. Yeah, but you have to punch your own numbers in it, yes. just like but you would if you were buying it from a person. Be, they'll have it both ways. You can either have someone doing it, like the bartender doing it for you, or you can have a kiosk. You can have both. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. That yeah. makes it even better. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One more is uh, this board voted unanimous to support this, and uh, it's a natural fit with the town of Hampton. Those that spoke earlier in support of this uh, are right on the money. It's a natural fit for Hampton, and uh, Mr. Renier is aptly instructed by the chair to uh, go to the uh, uh, State of New Hampshire website. You can review the law and answer your own questions. Uh, it'll be delineated there, but again, it was a unanimous vote. It's a natural fit for Hampton, and I uh, and I know the board encourages all people to support the measure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing at 7:15, and we will go to public <clears throat> comment period. Anybody from the public wishing to be heard? Please uh, come up to the podium. Michael Pierce, 84 Lock Road. I'm not here to talk about Kino. I'm sort of neutral on that. <clears throat> I'll be referring to Article 9 on the warrant. <clears throat> it is uh, $1.5 million to make one block of Lafayette Road in Hampton Pretty. The purpose of this article, which includes features such as ornamental lighting and sidewalks with granite curbing, appears to be primarily beautification driven to benefit only those businesses that are on that block. Taking $1.5 million from the road fund will clean it out and push other road repairs further down the road. The voters approved $1.1 million last year to address the sewers and repave the road essentially in the same section of Lafayette Road. <clears throat> that project is currently a work in progress and there is 113000 of that money left, and the town manager has indicated to the budget committee there's plenty of money to repave it this spring. John Nyan, experienced Hampton's president last year, said at the budget committee's public hearing last year that money for this project would come from state or federal funds. Article 9 only asks Hampton for Hampton taxpayer money. Lechman Bridal, who's a director of Experience Hampton and whose son is also an Experience Hampton director, as well as Lechman Waddell, whose wife is an Experience Hampton director, voting to approve this year's Article 9, nine there is an, an, apparent, an apparent conflict of interest. Apparent conflict of interest. There was only a 1% margin with the voters uh, at the ballot in last year's Experience Hampton's article. The Budget Committee voted in favor of it with a close six, seven to six vote, and there are only three selectmen that recommended last year's article on the ballot. This year, the selectmen discussed Article 9 for all of 46 seconds before approving it five to zero. During that discussion, Article 9 was characterized as to repair and rebuild the roadway along with some drainage improvements. No mention was made of the or ornamental lighting or the fact there was plenty of money left in last year's $1.1 million article to repave the road. It appears to me that town officials are quietly funding my major elements of the Experience Hampton proposal from last year using funds that the voters thought they were approving for the maintenance of our roads. In closing, I recommend the voters to vote no on Article 9 for the above reason. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to be heard? Different hat. <laughs> Richard Rennie at 29 Highland Ave. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, just direct my remarks to the residents of the Hampton Beach Village District, if I, may, if I may. I'm here tonight as moderator of the Village District's annual meeting to be held on Friday, March 30th at the Brown Air Fire Station. <clears throat> Voter registration and election of district offices will take place from 1 to 7 p.m. At 7 p.m., discussion and voting on the 2018 Village District budget. You may be a registered voter for the town-held election must be listed on the current district checklist to vote at the precinct at that time. If 
comes out of your status. It supervises the checklist of the conducting voter registration on Saturday, March 17th, from noon to 1 p.m. at the Brown Ave Fire Station. Proof of identity and residency required. I urge all pre precinct residents to attend and participate in our annual meeting again on March 30th. Now, another hat. <laughs> Just as an individual citizen, I don't know if you can give me an answer now, but I see under new business, maybe I'll wait and see, see then. Now my, my uh, the light bulbs went off here. I see in item two on your new business, a state project resurfacing of Brown Ave, Highland Ave, Church Street, Landing Road, and Route 101. If I may, I'm just asking, uh, what's the time frame on that? And we, we don't it hasn't been resolved yet. What, if during public comment, we don't respond. No, I understand that. So I'll, I'll wait, and hopefully you can give me an answer when you get to the, uh, the new business. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard? I will. <coughs> Gary Pohl, 4 Lion Street. Uh, Saturday I was taking something to the transfer station and when I was pulling the transfer station there was the, uh, I don't know what they call it, motion board, but there's a board that you get, a big thing that they normally put in the streets for messages to be put on. And on the message board was uh, a pr proposal or a, uh, a directive to s towards the town or suggestion that we should vote for a certain war article. I, I don't know if this is Kosher or if it's you should be doing this or not because next thing you know we're going to have trash uh, Trucks coming around with signs on them vote for certain articles. And I don't think this is quite correct The second thing I'd like to tie is congratulations to uh, Max Sullivan for his award that he received this past week. Thank you very much you. Anybody else in public wish to be heard no. Mr. Jones not you Surprise. <laughs> Nobody has seen no one else. We'll move on. Announcements and community calendar. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to remind everyone that this Sunday is the Hampton Half Marathon and that it's going to be from 10 o'clock in the morning till 1.15. And there will be several. Please be aware a large road race will be held Sunday, March 4th, about 900 runners. Please plan your driving trips before and after peak times. Peak times will be posted on your road the, on your road the Monday before the race. So just to remind you, that's this Sunday. So if anyone's got to get anywhere early in the morning, or just a reminder. Hopefully everyone got the postcard. Rusty. Yeah, I have this uh, left. It's uh, from Dick Sawyer uh, from the Hampton Area Lions Club. They have their winter auction. This Saturday, March 3rd, at the Ashworth by the Sea at 6 p.m. And also, I want to remind everybody that uh, we have very high tides this weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We also got a, a coastal storm that's supposed to be in the area, and it's going to hold the water into the harbor. So yep. any of those places down there that might want to move their cars probably should do so. Mr. Griffin. No, thank you. Dean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, condolences uh, to uh, Mrs. Woodburn in town and uh, she was a long-term employee of the high school and uh, we used to see quite a bit of her um, when we were on our way to the principal's office and uh, to uh, yeah, you end up as a selectman um, go figure and then um, um, Mrs. Barbara Sakurai uh, Kenny Sakurai's uh, mom and, uh, and, and Kenny's children uh, she just passed away last week so uh, our sympathies uh, to those families and finally the um, Democratic Party has sent out a, um, a message. Could I have some water, please? Excuse me, gentlemen. Can I have some water, please? Um, the Hampton Democrats uh, have sent out a, uh, uh, a notice on Tuesday, March 6th, 2018 at 630. There will be a, um, uh, a presentation by uh, candidates for Congress. That would be Mindy Mesmer and Mark McKenzie. Uh, I serve with both of them in uh, Concord, and they're both fabulous individuals. But that, again, will be um, the Hampton Democrats meeting Tuesday, March 6, 2018, at 6.30 p.m. at the Hampton United Methodist Church at 525 Lafayette Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, consent <coughs> agenda. Hampton Union, use of Selectman's Room, candidates debate, 3.06.18, 5.30 p.m. Hampton PTA used to selectman's room candidates night 306 18 7 p.m. 2018 sewer abatements 
parade and public gathering license, Ragnar Reach the Beach, 914.18 to 915.18. Use of town property, half <coughs> at the Hamptons, 3418 Ashworth Ave and Island Bath parking lots. Ragnar Reach the Beach, 09.14.18 to 09.15.18. Ashworth Avenue Park, uh, Ashworth Avenue parking lot, raffle permit, Experience Hampton, request of no objection for sports recreational facility, liquor license under the provisions of RSA 178 colon 22, on premise cocktail lounge license at the sports barn, 95 Drakeside Road. Uh, with the exception number seven, I believe they're going with the planning board this week. So they, they don't have sufficient property, and they're going before the planning board, and, and you might condition the approval yeah. on that one at, to yeah. receive approval from the planning board for parking. So we re remove it? Remove yeah. it well, you can either remove it or condition it, one Con of the two. Condition it upon the planning board's approval of the uh, additional parking requirement. Yeah, that's parking. your motion? Yep. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. <coughs> Appointments, none. Approval of minutes, February 5th. 2018. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Ooh. Opposed? Uh, February 12th, 2018. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Town Manager's Report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, property owners who wish to file for a property tax abatement must file by this Thursday, March 1st, 2018. That's a statutory date. Uh, please keep it in mind. You can not file after that date by statute. The annual town meeting and election will be held on Tuesday, March 13th at the Winnicott High School. Polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. For those who cannot attend but wish to and are eligible to vote, you will need to submit an application for an absentee ballot. Forms for your application are available on the town website and at the town clerk's office. Please follow the instructions very carefully. Property owners who are eligible for veterans, elderly, and blind exemptions from property taxes must obtain, complete, and file applications with the assessor's office not later than April 15, 2018. And property owners who are eligible for the Hampton Beach precinct tax exemption must obtain the necessary forms from the tax assessor's office, and that also must be filed by April 15, 2014. Mr. Chairman, what? Two, yeah, 2018. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, we, retroactive. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we've also received a number of complaints about political advertising in town. RSA 664.17 says that you may have political advertising during the campaign period, but it cannot be in the highway rights of way. It must be on private property, and it cannot be on telephone poles. So we're, we're watching uh, carefully. We are already picking a material up that is in violation of that statute. So I just want people to know. If they want their material, which is being picked up, it'll be behind the town hall and available to them anytime. And they have to have permission from the pri pro property owner, if right? If you're, you're placing it on private property, you do have to have the private property owner's permission, or they can remove it, and then I can't tell you what's going to happen to it. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Questions? Thank you. Rusty? All set. Thank you. Yeah, I think it, you're wise to mention that. It's This has been a bad year for people putting their signs out. Uh, and then putting them anywhere that they feel like it. I think they need people need to take a look at them. Agreed. Mr. Bean? Negative, sir. Old business. I have one thing. Yep. Can I please know what, can we determine what the uh, purpose of war in Article 9 is? I don't have nine. I don't have the war. Yeah, I don't have it in front of me, but I thought, I, when, I, when I voted for it, I thought it was for repaving of, you're talking about Lafayette, Lafayette Road? Road. Yeah. Too, yeah. Lafayette Road is principally for the reconstruction of the drainage system in the street, yeah. which will necessitate the reconstruction of the driveway because they're right. next to each other. Uh, that's the purpose of it, plus the, the uh, reconstruction of the, of the sidewalk, replacing street lighting, and um, paving the roadway. Right. And this is the purpose of doing this now is because we're going to have to redig the road up again. Correct. We would have to get dig back the road to up the again. Store. Right. And yeah. then, okay, so 
that is, and this came from town management, correct? That's or correct. public works or yep. some department of the town? Public works had planned this operation for some time. Okay, thank you. That was my assumption. Okay, and, and so just, are we emphatically stating, Mr. Chairman, if I may? Yep. That this is not for ornamentation? And, and I, I mean, Michael Michael is a valued right, public. Right, I guess why I want to make sure it was cleared up. It, it it's, is, it's, it's, there's a misunderstanding about what it's for, okay? It is for the drainage system, which is one of the principal problems in that street. Drainage is, is failing, mm -hmm. the same as the sewer pipe was failing. As long as we've got the road dug up again, or dug up now, we're going to have to dig up both sides to put the, the drainage in. Okay. There's no sense in repaving the road this year and going back in two or three years and digging it all up again. Okay, and, and I would request that, that that specific warrant, Article Number 9, be on the agenda specifically next week. There were there were some comments made, and I, I, I think it's fair to the voters that they know what they're voting on and that we drilled down on that because none of us uh, were aware of what Michael was asserting tonight. Uh, and it doesn't appear to be the case, and I don't think voters should have any doubt in their mind. About a million and a half dollar expenditure. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anything else under old business? Yeah, I do, uh, Mr. Chairman. Again, it, it goes in line with the uh, yeah. uh, the warrant, and I particularly want to uh, thank um, the rational taxpayers' support of, of the sewer bond. And I, I think that there there was a model that um, uh, the town manager, uh, the assistant town manager, public works, uh, the board, but but more more so. Uh, uh, Zenoy and Silberdick and that organization. Uh, they opined in the um, uh, 23 February Hampton Union. Uh, they were uh, in support of that. They have additional concerns. They also uh, are concerned about user fees rather than just a real estate valuation based for sewer. But it's a very well written article by uh, the rational taxpayers. And if I may quote, Mr. Chairman, rational taxpayers stand ready to assist the town in helping to ensure Hampton gets the best bang for the buck and we plan on watching and monitoring this most important project carefully. And in that light, we appreciate Mr. Pierce's comments tonight, Mr. Rainier's comments tonight, uh, and others. But again, I thought that was a, a, a nice model where there was uh, full transparency uh, that those, those folks that are so committed to the town were allowed into the process, rightfully so, and uh, contributed to it and then came out and supported it. Additionally, um, Mary Louise Wilsey is opining in the, um, uh, uh, the paper about the tort with the town, and she's supporting that. And of course, she is, uh, again, uh, seeking office. And uh, I think that that active citizenry in this town is, uh, is really uh, a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I wanted to share that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anything else under old business? New business, collaboration with UNH on sea level rise impacts smart and connected coastal communities. Mr. Chairman, we've had an invitation to join UNH along with some other communities on the seacoast. UNH is studying and putting together uh, an objective study to develop tools that provide for an objective and quantitative assessment of the risk to buildings and infrastructure from storm surge and sea level rise. Uh, it's called the Coastal Environmental Risk Index, uh, and they are requesting that Hampton participate in that. There's no cost to us. Uh, they would like to have us participate along with the other communities on the seacoast. Okay, and what, what, what's our commitment? What's our? Uh, there is no commitment. I, obviously, that we're going to have to uh, uh, provide them with information as they, as they need it, uh, but there is no actual direct commitment. Okay. Anybody uh, want to make a motion on that or want to wait on it or? Up to the board. Yeah. I'm leaving it open to the board. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know what would be making a motion. It doesn't say much. There's no backup data. Right. Um, Is I'm not this a the one that's supposed to have something to do with um, things about uh, maybe offering tax credits or something like that? No, that's a different program that's put out by the state and federal governments, and we are trying to effort that now uh, to see whether or not we can fit people into that. This is looking at uh, quantitative analysis of what will happen at sea level rise and with storm surge. Uh, as you know, there's a, you should know, there's a tremendous amount of storm surge, and we'll probably have some this weekend. Uh, from storms coming up the Atlantic coast, and with sea level rise, what little there has been so far, it continues to bring a lot of water into our residential neighborhoods on the marsh, at the at the back of um, Ashworth Avenue, for instance, and and up off of uh, 
the other streets in, in that general area, all the way up to the North Shore. Uh, they're trying to study it to find out what the impacts are and what can be done with it. Uh, they're, they're trying to look to analyze what's actually happening and come up with some quantitative answers. Well, I have a question, and we're going to be, if the, if the Warren article were to pass through, we would be studying this, too, in some sense for the town. We would be studying some, in some sense, yes. I'll yes. make a motion that we should do this. I don't think it hurts. I'll second. All in favor? Well, a discussion. I, I just have okay. questions. Uh, it's, it's 13 words. There's no backup material. Uh, UNH has a great program. Everybody is all for this, but uh, I don't know what the co collaboration requires. I don't know if there's any expenditure. It doesn't say it's revenue neutral. Uh, and, and, uh, Why don't I have them come to your next meeting and you can sit here and they can do a full presentation for you? I would just uh, yeah, thank you for the threat, Mr. Uh, Welch, <laughs> but I would, uh, I would just like a more detailed synopsis and uh, um, then I'm happy to support it. Um, well, and if you want to have a vote tonight, that's fine. I just won't vote for something. I don't know what it means. That's fine. I can, I can have them come in and do a full we presentation. We have a motion. We have a second. Well, yeah. sort of what Mr. Bean is kind of correct is, that, you know, at least if they give us a little bit of information. Okay. We could, you know, I, I'd, I'd be more apt to vote, vote next week okay. to a lot and have Are them. Are they going to be able to come next week? Well, they don't have to come. Just send us some information just to tell us what it's about. He's right. 13 words is not a lot to go on. All right. I agree with Rusty and Phil. Okay. I did send you a, uh, a letter from the chairman of the Conservation Commission this past week yeah, who described that. this program in detail. Yeah, I read and it. what little information that they have provided to me, I also provided to the board, but that's all yeah. I had. So do you want to re remove your motion? Whose motion was it? It was mine. I don't, you know, I don't mind waiting, but I don't think this sends a good message to the voters when we have, have a thing on there to, re to do a $100,000 warrant article. That's why I made the motion. Well, I'd, I'd say I'm not opposed to it. I just, I'd just like a little more information from what the state has. I, I think we can vote on it and get the information. If we don't want it, we can take it back. We have a motion. We have a second. We have discussion. The motion still stands on the floor. Does the second still stand? All right, let's be brave here. Um, I, I, we made our point. We're going to get more detailed analysis subject to that. I'm, I'm a favor of it. Okay? Thank okay. you. All right. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, that's fine. I long, think long we, we need to show some support to the voters <laughs> if we're interested. Agreed. All right, New Hampshire DOT Municipal Work Zone Agreements, State Project 41550, Tier 2, resurfacing on Brown Ave, Highland Ave, Church Street, Landing Road, and Route 101. Do you have information on that? I do. The state has sent us a request. Uh, they're, they're planning on uh, doing that work this year. They have a, a state program. They're going to do 7.3 miles of roadway resurfacing <coughs> starting uh, sometime uh, in this, this summer. Uh, these are some of the streets that they're going to do, and they're all, of course, within our community. Uh, when I, when I, the question was earlier, when are they going to start? We don't know that as of yet. They haven't given us a start date. Uh, when they say Brown Avenue, Highland Avenue, Church Street, and Landing Road, those are all part of the state layout, and certainly some of those portions of the roadways are, in fact, within the state layout. Uh, for instance, they're going to come down Route 101. They're going to come down to Brown Avenue, and they're going to turn at Brown Avenue. The state right away ends on the eastern side of that, that intersection, and um, there's a crossover uh, up at Highland Avenue, which they're going to pave. Uh, which is not, not ours, but theirs, and then they're going to pay from that point on Church Street back to Route 101. Okay. State Project 41215, Tier 2, resurfacing on Route 1 north of Lampson Road. Lampson Road, or basically at the base of the bridge on the, <coughs> uh, the railroad bridge on the uh, Northampton Town Line, at the base of that, on the on the Hampton side of the bridge, is where the state layout of the state highway begins. Before that, it's it's town town roadway. Uh, they're going to start paving there, and they're going to pave north 6 point, 16.7 miles. Hmm. Some of that's in Hampton, uh, including a portion of Route 151, uh, and they're going to let's see, actually it's. Uh, 302, 16, 23, 101, Route 11, and Route 125, uh, and a portion of uh, Portsmouth Avenue, which is just across the town line. We, we own a portion of that. They're going to do the entranceway. Um, 
they're going to pave that area and uh, they would like us to sign a, a contract with them authorizing them to go ahead and use flaggers on the state highways uh, and police officers as they need them. That's basically what this is all about. Okay. And your recommendation? Your uh, we've done this before on several several other highways. Uh, they, you remember they did uh, the southern part of Route uh, Route One this past yep. year, and we we agreed with them there. And they've used our police officers where necessary. Other than that, they've used either state police officers or flaggers, okay. which they're allowed to do on their highway. Okay. They just want our concurrence to cooperate with them. So we area. need a motion on that. I would say you need a motion on that. So <laughs> moved. <Lotta>. Second. <laughs> okay. All in favor. Okay. Opposed? None. Um, waivers from the purchasing policy and purchasing procedures for the purchase of intravenous pipe pumps for the fire department. 718-9, control supervision and enforcement. Do we need to do each one separately? Or no, all? you can do them collectively, Mr. Chair. 718-15, period one, policy waivers. 718-16, sole source providers. This is a sole source provider. Uh, it is recommended by uh, Homeland Security. It's recommended by the fire department. It's recommended by, um, I guess that's it. Um, these, our current pumps, which we use for intravenous fluids on the ambulances, are about to expire as far as date is concerned. We need to fi find and, and acquire new ones. These new ones are very good. They're, they, they're far superior to the ones we currently have and the fire department would like to enjoy purchasing them. Um, the current ones that we have, they have offered to recondition them. There's a $100 difference between the new ones and the reconditioned ones, but the reconditioned ones will not have the metering capability that the, the new ones will, uh, precise metering capability in order to uh, inject the IV fluid. The fire department's recommendation, and I agree with them, is to purchase the ambulance from the uh, ambulance fund. But it does require board approval. I have no questions. Mo motion? Or? I'll make a motion that we uh, allow the uh, fire department to purchase the pumps for each of our three ambulances for a total cost of $9,600. Second. And, and uh, go, uh, waive, waive the uh, sections. <laughs> the purchasing, purchasing policy. policy. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> Waivers from purchasing policy and purchasing procedures for the Church Street grease cleaning of wet wells. 718 3, period A, purchase of supplies, materials, and services. 718 9, control, supervision, and enforcement. 718 15, period 1, policy waivers. 718 16, sole source provider. Again, Mr. Chairman, this is a sole source provider. It's, the cost is $23,800. There is in the Church Street Station a cake of um, grease. I hate to say that, but it's a cake of grease uh, that is more than four feet thick in the pump station that needs to be removed. Uh, and this provider has the capability, has the equipment, uh, and they are the only source of provider with the equipment that can remove this material. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Were you guys here to answer any questions? Yeah. Or? Any questions? I, I guess we don't have any. I or? would just add, it's per the 18 January 2018 memo from Chris Jacobs, the director, and it is a sole source and, and that we now conform with the purchasing policy having identified such and it is not to exceed $23,800. Where does the grease come from? Everybody at the beach. You guys just want to move up, come up and... Just give us a little. Uh, I know you were waiting to get on TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it comes from uh, either the restaurants or residential use. Um, it just it builds up over time. And How much time has this built up, would you say? Well, when we've been the in there uh, a couple times trying to uh, have it cleaned out by different other means, either a septic collar or... A, a different back truck, but uh, this company here, they have the means of actually uh, sucking it up totally, cleaning the whole thing right out and offloading it 
at their facility, which is. Uh, Can I just interrupt for a minute? Can you guys just in, 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 uh, identify yourselves? Uh, just because we all know you, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike Duby, wastewater operations. And Mike Carl, uh, wastewater chief operator. Okay. So, so do you suspect that people are putting, uh, emptying their uh, grease traps or something in there? It, it could be, you know, just regular uh, bathing soap. It uh, go goes down the drain and then it congeals back again. Mm -hmm. and, and grease from, you know, people cooking bacon or what, what have you. It's just, you know, I think we just need to go and educate the public more about the, the harmful effects it does have. With the, and how the often system. should this be cleaned out like that? I mean, how many? It, well, the amount of grease that we do see from the beached area, from, you know, maybe all the seafood that's cooked and stuff that, you know, we're going to uh, get to it uh, twice a year. So it, it won't be as bad okay. next time around. We hope. <laughs> right. Most, One of the issues within the state is the number of disposal places to get rid of the grease is um, there are fewer and fewer places to get rid of it. For example, uh, waste management up in Rochester just closed their liquid waste uh, disposal site. So it makes it harder for us to find a space to dispose of this. We can't get rid of it in our own treatment plant, so we have to truck it off-site. And then after uh, we get this cleaned out, we uh, are going to demo a couple of units to keep the, uh, the water in the wet well mixed up so that the grease doesn't have time to, like, congeal and stuff. Mm -hmm. So if we, we're going to see how that would work, too. Just okay, to great. This. For a while, people were collecting grease and using it as fuel, right? And that, that sort right. of diminished? Um, I don't know if there's any um, program like that that's operating currently down at the beach. Um, yeah. Rusty? Don't most of our restaurants have grease traps and that you guys inspect mm -hmm. those? Correctly? We do. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, like you said, I mean, <clears throat> it is a beach community, and right. yeah. I'm sure a lot of people fry food at home, and yeah. mm -hmm. it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. so. I just said one thing. Yeah, that too. Most of, I mean, I worked in a lot of restaurants in this town, and everyone I've worked in has always had a grease trap. But mm -hmm. um, just like you said, if you cook bacon or something, like you shouldn't just let that go down the drain. Mm -hmm. Like no. you should put it. You're supposed to put that like in a can or something. Exactly. And then, and yeah, I don't think. Yeah, trash. yeah I think yeah, like you said, a lot of people just need. To then what's the proper way to dispose of that? So in a can and then in, in the, the trash? In a can and then in yeah. the trash. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's, I can't imagine throwing it down my drain. Yeah. Anybody surprised. else? That's okay, uh, we have a motion. Motion and a second. Yep. Okay, all in favor? Good, okay. thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I just thought you thank sat you. there, you might as well get a chance <laughs> to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, DWSRF and DWGWTF funding opportunities for me remediation of aquarian water. I'll defer to uh, our vice chairman. You're going to okay. leave me to decipher those initials? <laughs> so I believe it's a uh, drinking water state revolving fund and it drinking is. water groundwater trust fund. That's correct. So <laughs> <laughs> She's good. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that I've been, uh, actually Brian is here tonight from Aquarian, and we've been uh, talking a lot about these funds. And there's going to be a workshop coming up April 18th, and both of us concur that the town and Aquarian should work together and try to see if we can pursue these funds to clean up our water. And we okay. definitely agree that the water company and the town need to work together. So I just wanted to fill the board in on that. That's what I'm planning on doing. I'm hoping that Aquarian is someone from, Brian or someone from Aquarian may accompany me. I think town council may go as well so that we can learn a little bit more about what types of projects are going to be uh, accepted or what they're looking for, for data from the people that are applying for the funds. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. Anything else under our new business? Oh, yes, sir. Nothing else under new business closing comments? Max, you're going to make a closing comment? <laughs> Nothing? Sorry. Okay, a motion to adjourn. So moved. At Second. 1949. Okay, all in favor?
All opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Max. So, Max, what award? Thank you.